Hello everybody, and are you ready to go flying today? Oh, I'm so glad to hear that because so am I. Now, where are we going to go to, you ask? Good question. Now, Mike944 wrote to me and he said, can you do a flight from Venice, which is L-I-P-Z, to Zion, which is L-S-G-S, -S, in Switzerland? Wow, yes, of course. Hmm. That would be a fun flight. Of course, there are no commercial flights between the two points, so we're going to have to make our own flight plan. But we can do that, no problem at all. And I've got some excellent scenery for this. I really do. Venice LIPZ Airport scenery is made by RF Scenery Building. RF Scenery Building. And Scion LSGS Airport scenery is made by FlyLogic Software. FlyLogic Software. Lovely scenery. Very detailed. Now... We're going to go on this particular route and it's going to take us over the Alps, down into valleys with an interesting landing on runway, let's see, I think it's runway 25. They only use this one runway for approaches anyway, so that's the one that we will have to use. So Mike, are you ready to go? Then let's go on over into pre-flight and have a look. Now, I'm starting today in Flight Radar 24. Here you can see it up here. And I'm in the live traffic mode right now. Here's the airport right down here. And I'm going to zoom in and see this. This is a flight that is departing or has arrived right now. Let's see. This is going to go to Amsterdam. Okay. So... Here it is, off on its way. This, and so it's departing on this runway. That's live right now. So we know what the active runway is for this particular airport. And off it goes. Now, looking over here, this area here seems to be where all of the Ryanair flights come in and out of. Um, they may go into some others, but when I did check some earlier flights that were departing or coming into this airport, they were all from here. So we are going to choose one of these stands right over here. Looking at our target, our destination, here we are. Let me just zoom back out. Look at all of this. See? This is all in the middle of the Alps right here. And here's the runway. It's a single runway. And everything comes in on this runway right here. Now, there are no aircraft coming in or out at the minute to be able to check this, but I have another way of checking. Now, it does, does say here that the wind is 60 degrees. So you say to yourself, well... If we take off from there, then we're taking off or landing with the wind behind us. But apparently that is the norm for this airport. Don't ask me why. Temperature's 10 degrees. There's some rain, so there's some cloud overhead. So there's a little bit to look out for. And when we land, we're going to go in and park somewhere up here. 
because this right there, that's the terminal building and we need to be close to that. So with the wingspan that we've got on a 737, it's a little bit bigger than what they normally get here. So we are going to have to be uh, parking on the largest spot that we can. So we'll go up into this area here. Now, I want to show you this. This is Zion Airport and it's live view right now. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. It's a camera that is located on a building right there and <clears throat> it's got, it just keeps moving back and forth. And it shows us the conditions. So you can see what the conditions are. Cloud. It's going to be a very interesting approach because if there's going to be cloud, we're going to have to pass through that cloud in order to see anything here. You can see there's quite a bit of cloud up here. The tops of the Alps are definitely obscured. All right, let's go in and since right here, this is where we're going to be parking when we come in. So at least now we have a good idea what we're looking at. And this building, this must be the terminal building right here. All right, here we go. Let's make a flight plan. We're Ryanair and we're 186. And we're going to go from LIPZ and we're going to go to LSGS. And Zurich is our alternate. Here's the airframe. We'll put that in. We are cruise profile six. There's our registration. By the way, the airframe contains all the data necessary for SimBrief to be able to calculate fuel and all of the other necessary things for flight in a modern aircraft. Schedule flight time, one hour, 20 minutes. It's calling for a departure on runway 22 left, arrival 25. There we go. We're going to leave the altitude as auto because I'm not sure what's going to come up. We are going to be full and we are still going to have one ton of, that's it, yes, champagne and caviar. <laughs> and right here, this is our route. So the VIC 6 Quebec, that's the departure said, and this is the route, and the Valo 1 whiskey, that is our arrival star. That's the standard terminal, terminal arrival route. Route distance is 282 nautical miles. And this is the route departing Venice and going right over the top of this area. See, Verona, by the way, that's where my pal in Italy is. And he's got... 14 or 15 degrees temperature right there right now. A lot better than we have in England. Over the top of Milan, underneath Bergamo, over here to make the approach into LSGS. Geneva's off to the south, off to the left, and here's Zurich to the north. All right, let's save this. And let's go ahead and generate the flight plan. All right, here we are in the summary. Origin is Marco Polo, destination Sion, alternate Zurich. And we've been given 30,000 feet for our cruise altitude. Airtime, 55 minutes, block fuel, 6501. And there's the routing. No dispatcher remarks. 
right here. This is who we are, Ryanair 186. And there, the F300, that's the flight cruise altitude. This is our route. And right here is the alternate. We are cost index six. Our average wind uh, aloft is 244 at 34 knots. Quite a uh, nice stiff breeze there. There's the block fuel that we're going to need. Uh, reserves, 3,012 kilograms, just over three metric tons. Trip and taxi, 2,794. That's almost 2.8 metric tons there. No tankering recommended. And this is the full route, and I'll be sure to post this in the description box below the video. We're going to need to know the information for our descent, especially for flight level 200 and for flight level 150 and for flight level 100. That's 10,000 feet, 15,000 feet and 20,000 feet. Here is the wind information for our flight route departing from Venice over here going across and as you can see <laughs> we have pretty much headwinds all the way. <laughs> well, well, well. What, what would be different for Ryanair 186 but to have headwinds? Once in a while we do get tailwinds but most of the time it seems we get headwinds. Well, well, no matter will manage. And here is the vertical profile for our trip, starting out here at sea level with, at Venice, climbing up here to the uh, cruising altitude route of 30,000 feet, and then descending over these, you know, you can see these, these are the Alps. So we'll be descending over the top of the Alps into landing at Sion Airport right here. So let's go on in then to Navigraph Charts. Well, we click Flights, New Flight, and From Sim Brief, and we use the latest one that we just made. Open up the Charts list. We're going to need to know the airport information and the parking stands and coordinates. We'll be using a departure. So this is the departure that they want us to take. So we'll be pinning that also to the bottom. Going over to our destination, we'll open up the charts and here's the information for the airport. We'll be coming in on this airport, on this uh, parking area up here. Uh, this is the terminal right there at that particular point. Now the length of the runway is 6,562 feet. So it's not the longest in, the, uh, in Europe, not by any means, but we will do what we can uh, to make sure that we stop before we get to the end. Uh, there's the ATIS, and there's the Zion Ground, and there's the tower frequencies. Airport elevation is 1,582 feet, so we're going to be up quite a bit. All right, I'm going to close that. And then we'll be coming in on 2.5. I'm going to pin that one and bring this one up. Now, if you see this, when we get to the D7 point, there is then a slight... We, we're going to have to be visual on this. And then that's where we have to make a slight left turn deviation in order to make a landing on here. So that's an offset localizer. 
It's going to be a very interesting process. Here's Grana, and then we make a turn here and start descending as we do this, coming down and making our turn to here, 17,000 feet. And then there is the very interesting, very interesting. Okay, we have the information. We're all set to go. So I'll close this up. And there's our route. Good. Are you all set? All right, then, Mike, let's go on into the cockpit. Well, Mike, come on in. Do take your seat. Buckle up and let's get ourselves ready. We are here at wonderful Marco Polo Airport. This is Venice. And it is a very detailed airport indeed. And in fact, let me show you what, what it looks like. Looking out over to the left, you can see that we have quite a bit of cloud and we are in the shade at the moment. This is made by RF Scenery Builder. This is Venice LIPZ Airport Scenery by RF Scenery Builder. And it's very, very detailed. My frame rate is wonderful. It is 26, 25, 26 frames per second. So it is very, very good. And remember, I am using three large monitors on the outside for this and they are each 4K UHD, 4K resolution and I pulled out all of the stops. I'm also running Active Sky which is of course is another layer on top of everything else. Now I'm also using the new Navigraph Charts 8 today and I have it and you can see it right here on the side. Now this allows us some extraordinary detail, much, much better than the previous versions. So I'm just going to zoom in here and you can see exactly where we're at. We're parked right there at stand 3. 362 that's 362 and that's where we are right here at 362 and you can see all the detail of the taxiways the runways everything is all right there and yes it does rotate so that we can choose different views um, now that's the full route that you can see and you can see what I've got at the other end. So I'm going to be using the IGS-25 approach when we get to Sion. But for the moment, let's see if I can zoom in on this again. Uh, I'm just getting used to this, so it's uh, <laughs> quite new for me. A new toy to play with isn't it <laughs> all right so I'm just going to put it like this and that way we get a good chance to see everything that we need don't know yet which runway we'll be taking off from that of course is all up to uh, ATC and they hold their cards very close to the chest until we're ready <laughs> now I've loaded on uh, all the fuel that we need and I've got 6,501 kilograms of fuel. That's six and a half metric tons of fuel. Wow, I'm going to be paying for that for a very, very long time, <laughs> as if. Wow, but this is a good, 
bit of scenery and so is the new Navigraph Charts 8, which is what we've got here. All right. Now, you know what we do? We turn on the battery, turn on the fuel pumps, and then we start the APU. And right here, there, the low oil pressure light has just come on. And what we're looking for now is for the engine gas temperature to start to rise. There it goes. Look at that. By the way, this is made by open cockpits, this forward overhead. And I've got the switch set for uh, APU generator for when it comes on. It's showing zero at the moment, of course, because we are running strictly on the battery. And here it goes, and now it's starting to stabilize. I'm going to look for this light to come on. And when it does, ah, there. Now, up here, you can see that we have 115 volts that we have now to be able to power everything in the cockpit and get everything ready. So, I'm going to turn on the navigation IRS up here, turn on the galley, turn on the emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seatbelt. There's the left and the right window heat, I'll leave the probes for later. Turning on the electrical hydraulic pumps, over here you can see the forward service hatch light is on and the equipment is on. That's because outside the air stairs are down and, oh yes, I can start to see our passengers, our self-loading cargo, are getting ready to climb the stairs to board. So I'd better turn on the heat because it's not the best of temperatures. So there's the packs going on. And there's the air pressure putting in the heat. And we do need heat because outside it is only 14 degrees right here in Venice at the moment. Actually, they're about 4 degrees or 5 degrees better than we are in England at the minute. And then I'm going to turn on the position light to steady so that the ground crews know that we're working and getting things set up in here. Right, now that we are at that particular point, we can now program the FMC. We check that the air rack is in date and there are no issues. The program is not showing any errors. Go to the position and we are, of course, at LIPZ, which is Marco Polo in Venice. And we are at stand 362, let's put that in, 362. And it says it's not in the database. So, what we do now is I'm going to go next page, and I'm going to see what it says right here. And this gives me the GPS reading, I'll put that in the temporary there, come back up here, and put it in there. So now that's the other way of doing it. I've gone right to the GPS and it said this is where we are. It's checked everything out. So now let's go to the route. So LIPZ up there and our destination is LSGS. LSGS. We're Ryanair and we are number 186. Go to next page. And now our route goes directly to VIC. V-I-C, V-I-C. Then we take the Lima 615, Lima 615. And that will take us to Aosta. So A-O-S-T-A. And then we go directly from there to Valor, V-A-L, 
O R. And that's it. Activate that, execute. Now we go to the fix and we put in LSGS again. LSGS. Because this is our destination and we need to put in some circles around our destination for the purposes of our navigation. So we need a four mile circle, we need a 10 mile circle, and we need a 30 mile circle. Go to descent, go to forecast. Transition level is 6,000 feet, which is good. And we need the information for flight level 200, flight level 150, and 100 which is 10,000 feet. The Q&H at our destination is 1017. 1017. The wind speed and direction at flight level 200 is 236 at 34. 236 at 34. At 150, it is 244 at 15, 244 at 15, and at 10,000 feet, it is 176 at 4, 176 at 4. And we execute that. Go to departures and arrivals, go to departures, and now this is where we need to listen in to the ATIS to see what the current runway and current conditions are. And then that would be frequency is 122.22. Tessera, airport information, Mike 1204, Zulu, wind calm, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, few clouds at 7000, temperature 152.8, altimeter 101, minor, landing and departing, runway 4 right and runway 4 left. The FIR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact. You have Mike. Right, we have Mike. So we know it's going to be four or four left or four right. So let's go ahead and get our clearance. Venus ground Ryanair one eight six IFR two sign ready to copy. Ryanair one eight six is cleared to Victor Alpha Lima Oscar Romeo Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain one zero thousand departure frequency X one one eight point nine squat zero six four two. Ryanair one eight six cleared to Victor Alpha Lima Oscar Romeo Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain one zero thousand departure on one one eight point nine squat zero six four two. Ryanair one eight six redback is correct. Contact ground on one two one point seven when ready to taxi. Right, so let's request our taxi clearance so we know which runway they're going to give us. Venice ground Ryanair one eight six with Mike ready to taxi IFR. Ryanair one eight six taxi to and hold short at runway four left using taxiway back Mike Sierra Bravo contact tower on one two zero point two when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway four left via taxiway Quebec Mike Sierra Bravo Ryanair 186. Right, so we're going to go four left. I'll put four left in there. And
So we'll use the 9 Victor and add that to the root. So there's now our root change. Since we're going in a different direction, so we'll use the... There it is. Victor 9 Victor root right there. Execute that. Go to departures and arrivals. We're coming in on IGS25. And we're coming in on the Valor 1 West approach. Transition is Grana. Put that in. Execute that. Now we go to legs, and here is when we go through this and check the route to make sure that we have a good route. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to plan. And there you can see our departure route is already in there, so I'm going to now go through each of the steps and look at the route, see how it works out. So far, so good. Delta, all the way across. Lego, okay. SRN, Aosta. Now, there's the one. This is where we make that turn to go uh, intercept our approach and there it is there's the approach coming around and if I just zoom out a little bit here you can see there is the 30 mile circle that we put in coming around and going down now the final there's the 10 mile circle and there's the 4 mile circle that we put in and that will bring us all the way down to the runway so we have everything in that we need so now I'm going to switch back to map I'm going to put the weather on mine and double click so the data comes up and I'm going to switch this to 20 for my range. And now I'm going to also turn on the TCAS to see if there's any kind of traffic in the area. I'm going to put terrain on yours. Very important because we've got all those Alps that we have to negotiate. And I'll put the data on yours as well. Now we'll go into route, go to perform the initialization, and here's where we complete the plan. The plan fuel, we have reserves are 3,012. Trip and tax is 2,794. That comes to 5,806 or 5.8. So I'm going to put 5.8 in for the plan. Reserves are 3. Our cost index is 6. Our cruising altitude is flight level 300. Cruise wind is 244 at 34, 244 at 34. Transition altitude at our destination is 17,000 feet, 17000. So I have to put that in there. Now I just do a double click of that and it calculates everything that we need. Execute that. Go to N1 limit. We'll accept the 15 degrees outside. We won't be doing any D rates or bumps. Go to and we want 10 degrees of flap. Double click that and it gives us the center of gravity and the value for the trim wheel. One click on each of these gives us the V1 rotate and V2 liftoff speeds. 
So now up here, I need to put in the information that we need. We're to climb to 10,000 feet, so I'm going to leave the 10,000 feet in there. Runway 4 left requires 039 degrees, so I'm going to do 039 degrees right here. This is for takeoff. I'll put 390 in here. 39, there we go. I'll do yours too. 39 degrees. All right, and now I'm going to put in 146 for the takeoff speed, 146. Up here, I'm going to put in 30,000 feet because this is our cruising altitude. The elevation at our destination is 1,582. We'll make it 1,600 feet. It's close enough to 1,600 feet. Now this is for pressurization and that's our landing altitude. Right, now we'll check this. Flight director on, flight director on. Push the V nav, push the L nav. We have green lights on both, so I'll arm the auto throttle right there. I'm now gonna turn on the your damper and the flight continuity light went out. VOR1, I'm pressing on, and that's the frequency for the localizer of 110.7, which I have in VOR1. VOR2 is the Zion VOR, which is 112.15, and I'll do the same over here, activating those on your screen. Now I'm going to turn this to RTO, so we are getting getting ready to go everybody's on board the Sun has just popped out so I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the doors that's the electric motor that you can hear bringing up and folding those stairs into a compartment directly underneath the forward hatch it really is a neat arrangement there. Right, I've added the barometer decision height of 4490 down here. So we are pretty much set to go. Okay, I think it's everything's checked out. So what we need to do now is we need to get ourselves ready to do a push back and start. So which one would you like to start first? Which engine would you like to start? Number one on the left and number two on the right. You'd like to start number two on the right? Okay. So what I'll do is I'll switch this then to generator two in preparation. Now when we push back, as you can see on the Navigraph charts here, We'll need to have our tail go to the right and our nose to the left in order to be able to taxi down to the uh, threshold of runway 04 left. Okay, so, well, before we do that, we'd better do our check, hadn't we? Fuel is checked, windows locked, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are out. MCP is programmed, takeoff thrust bugs done, CDU pre flight is completed, rudder air on trim is free, taxi takeoff briefing completed, anti collision light is now going on. So, are you ready? Everything set? Okay, then in that case, let's. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our right. Copy that, ready to push. Tail to the right. Parking brake release, please. Parking brake is released and I've turned off the heat because we need to put the Brakes air released. into the en engines to spin them around. So, looking on here, 
Alright, I'm now switching engine number one. The start valve has opened. The N2 is starting to spin up. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. It's coming up very nicely. And getting ready. 24. There's the fuel. Now the engine gas temperature is igniting. Look at that. Ah, it's really cooking. We're looking now for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it did. And we're moving back very nicely. Let's see if we can avoid any kamikazes. I'm looking up here for 115 volts. There we go, switching now to engine number one, starting number one. Start valve has opened, the N2 is spinning up on the one, number one engine. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel on this one. Push back complete, parking brake set. Parking brake, fuel is now brake introduced. Set. I'm now looking for the engine gas temperature to ignite and rise. There it is. Good. We're getting a good hot start there. Low oil pressure Steering light to go below. out. Watch for the salute release from guidance on your right and have a good flight. Oh, those gentlemen are really nice on the ground, aren't they? And everything is looking good on that. And I'm now looking for 115 volts up here. We've got it. Now, when this tick mark here goes off, it says then we have a balanced engine. There we go. So now I'm going to switch to the main engines for the generators. I'm going to turn on the heat, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Right, generators are on. Probe heat is now going on, left and right. Anti-ice not required, isolation valve correct. Engine start levers idle, detent. Flight dock door closed and locked. Recall is checked, flight controls checked, flaps. We're going to go now to flaps 10. And we'll check to make sure that everything is good on there. And when we get a green light, there, we've got a green light on the flaps. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake is RTO. Speed brake lever down the tent. Ground equipment is clear. So, what we do now is we're all clear. I'm going to turn on the taxi lights. And we're going to go and taxi to the active runway. And to do that, we're going to go down this taxiway you see we're going to go over onto this line here and then follow it around down the Mike taxiway all the way down until we get to the end so are you ready okay then Mike get ourselves set right brakes are off attendance we are beginning to move. This is really nice detail here, you know, really. So give it a boost to get ourselves unstuck. And we'll move over to this yellow line here and straddle this. Now you can see us moving on that chart. Lovely detail, lovely detail. So here we go and we will turn down there.
and that will take us straight down the towards the Mike taxiway. Got to watch my speed while I'm on the main apron. Tower, that's over there by the way. They spot me speeding, they'll give me a ticket. They really do, you know. <laughs> yeah, they do things like that. But we've got some beautiful, interesting weather generated outside. But at least we're clear of the kamikazes. And here's the Mike taxiway. Almost missed it. Well, it would be nicer if the weather was a bit more cooperative, but this is delightful scenery. This really is, is delightful scenery. This is, um, what is it, RF Scenery Building? Yes, RF Scenery Building are the ones who make this. This is the first time, of course, I've been using Navigraph Charts version 8, so this is going to be an interesting experiment for me. Well, we're at the M7 and passing. We need to go all the way down to the end. to contact the tower and request takeoff clearance. Venice Tower, Brian F186, ready to go, runway 4 left, IFR2, Victor Alpha, Lima, Oscar, Romeo, Ryanair, 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 4 left. Cleared for takeoff, runway 4 left, Ryanair, 186. We are cleared for takeoff, everything is set, engine bleeds are and engine start switches are on. Position is now going strobe and steady. Cabin is secure and starting the clock. Right, we will taxi now to the threshold. Here's where we make our turn. Check, make sure nothing is coming. There we go, on to four left. All right. 
advance power to M1. All lights are now on. And toga button push. Full power. very nicely, everything is looking good, flaps are up, and engine bleeds are on, check, packs auto, check, and 10,000 feet, that's off, crew is released to go to work, and altimeters are all set, and now, Set this to 30,000 feet and we continue our climb out. Okay, Mike, we're on our way. We have departed, everything looked good, doesn't seem to be any errors, so we are <laughs> looking all right. So why don't you go on into the back and grab some of that champagne and caviar and as soon as we are over the airport in that vicinity where we make our little googly turn on that IGS 25 approach 
and I'll give you a shout, okay? See you in a little bit. there you are Mike come on back in and take your seat let me tell you where we are we are now we are within the 30 mile radius of the airport of Zion and we are just approaching over Valor that will be our next one and that's when we make that sharp turn to the right to start our descent and approach onto the IGS-25 approach. So while we have, um, I'm going to request a full stop landing from Zion. Let's see what they tell us. Zion Tower, Ryanair 18622 miles south to land. Ryanair 186, Zion Tower, fly right 8, runway 7, altimeter 101, miles. Well, that is very weird because everything else says it should be 25 and not runway 7. So we're not, um, we're going to ignore those instructions and we're going to come in on runway 25 as planned because it's, um, the, I think that P3D is just automatically assuming. Please acknowledge. Fly right face, runway 7, Ryan at 186. <laughs> We're going to go and do the 2 5 approach instead. P3D, I think, just assumes this, and it's probably one of those glitches. So, what can we do? But anyway, I'm going to put the seatbelt signs on again and attendants get everybody all the glasses picked up and by the way, you can see here that um, we're over the Alps but it's all underneath us under all underneath us under this cloud covering look at all of this underneath that are the Alps but it's a beautiful day up here I'm not so sure that it's a beautiful day down below but that's that's what we're at Okay, I'm going on we're now going to cross over the top and we have started our descent everything is looking good I'm going to turn on the main lights because 
we want to have visibility as we descend and we are going to be descending only to 17,000 feet before we're actually on our final so and we are coming down the Navigraph charts has worked out rather well there was one glitch it came up and said that the uh, there was a JavaScript error and I had to cancel it but it didn't crash the program it just came up with the error now we're coming over Zion should be to the left. All I can see below are the tops of the Alps and there's a lot of snow on there and it does not look very forgiving should we make a mistake. I've got the terrain inhibitor uh, already activated because I don't want to get ourselves caught uh, going over the mountains and especially at a low altitude with terrain, terrain, terrain all the time. And on your screen we've got the uh, descent profile and so far everything seems to be looking good bringing our speed down to 200 knots We're going down into the soup, so engines continuous. Outside air temperature is minus 15, so I'm going to have to be ready to turn on the anti-ice as soon as we hit the cloud.
We're coming up on GS601. Seeing the tops of the Alps. see there are plenty of uh, interesting peaks sticking up on our course which if I didn't have the terrain inhibitor on would be shouting out at me right now. We're turning towards the valley. And coming on to our final approach. We are now pointed towards the airport. We are 30 DME miles away. Okay, attendance, secure for landing.
bit awkward. The charts has signed me out. That's the second time it's signed me out. feet which is our minimum and we are now we're locking onto the localizer and on the glide slope going down into the soup temperature is minus seven so anti-ice is going on going down, flaps going down, and we're losing visibility, we are in IFR conditions. So we're on course. mountains out there. turn into ice on the wings. There's the valley we're going down. Wow, that is some approach. I think I see the airport ahead, just through the cloud. All right, we're now at six degrees plus, so I'm turning off the anti-ice. The airport is ahead.
rain has stopped for the moment. are on, everything set, the tendons, we are landing. I have control. Ah! Well, we will have to see about that. But the runway is in sight. Approaching minimums. Minimums. We are committed to land. Twenty five hundred. Well, we cleared that mountain. Let's see if we can clear the others. Here's where we make our turn on to match the final. To white, to red, we're on course. little bit fast. Let's switch that to four. Five hundred. Five hundred. And we're four lining hundred. up. Sink rate. Sink rate. Two hundred. One fifty. One sink rate. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. And six, you were not cleared to land. Reverse thrusters are on. No, we weren't cleared to land on runway 25, but on the other one, weren't we? Okay. Ryanair 1-8-6, you were not cleared to land. Clear the runway. Indeed. All right, let's have a look at this. See where we are. Okay. We're going to need to... Ryanair 1-8-6, you were not cleared to land. Clear the runway. to do a turnaround and backtrack is what we have to do. Okay. So I'm going to go into here and turn around. We have trains here too. Look at that.
crew is released to go to work. And here's the scenery. Right, we have to go up here and we'll take Airport parking. Let's have a look at that. We take the Bravo to the left, I think. Coming up on Charlie. This is really detailed scenery. This is made by FlyLogic software. There's a lot of detail in this. This is the Charlie. Now we take the next one. And there's the terminal building right ahead. That's that red building up ahead. So starting the APU. And going to APU generator there. So this is the Bravo. So. I'll stick my hand out because we'll make a turn here. <laughs> and I'm going to have to be very careful not to go straying over the line because it's, there's a lot of obstructions here. Not to mention kamikazes. If anything, I'll need to stay as close on here as possible. Okay, make that. And Right, I'm going to move on to here. There's a lot of flickering on the scenery here. Right, this is Stand 11. Okay, parking brake is on, and engines off. Shutdown is complete. Right. Okay, turning everything off. And stairs and door is opening. Okay, and all of that is off. TCAS is off. And cleanup is good. All right. Now, fuel off, APU off, battery off, shutdown is complete. And we're here at stand 11. Let me show you the detail. This is. 
really, really something. We are right next to the railway station and they seem to have regular trains running past here, which is very, very good. And the frame rate is 22, 23, yeah, 22, a little bit lower than uh, I would like it with all of this detail, but look at the mountain scenery behind. All of the snow on top. And here is the the terminal building, you can see there's a lot of detail and kamikazes. Look at them. Pay no attention to me. And there's the scenery around. And if you remember when we had a look earlier, we had a look at the panoramic view from the camera on top. Oh, the train train just went through and on top of there right up here that looks like that's where the camera is located but there's a lot of detail a lot of detail in this very impressed very impressed wow Well, Mike, that was a very interesting approach and landing. Uh, going down in clouds, knowing that there are mountains everywhere around, is certainly an yeah, is certainly a bit of a well, puts a breeze up you a bit, doesn't it? But we landed, but I had to take it manually all the way in. Um, because things were not going to work well if I just left it to do its own thing. So, just as well that we did. And we came in and uh, we landed at a good, well, with lots of space, but not enough time to be able to take off on any of the runway's exits on this side of the runway. But there's a lot of detail in this. And this is FlyLogic software that designed this, so I'm very impressed with this. Very impressed indeed. Well, I hope that we did all right and that we, uh, other than the fact that they wanted us to land in the different direction, when everything was saying has to be 25, because that's apparently the, uh, the routine here. And the wind was behind us which was a little bit of a worry because then it means that your speed is going to be a little bit faster at touchdown and manage to avoid that a little bit but I rather enjoyed that that was a bit of a thrill so thank you for the suggestion very much yes I do appreciate that thank you and I will see you again on another flight and everyone else stay good Stay well, and I'll see you all again next week on the same channel with another flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.